I'm something of a natural skeptic. I question pretty much everything. So when I hear phrases like post-agile, I ask myself what was wrong with agile and what it is that we think that we could do better. And before we look to supersede it, did we ever really do agile in the first place? At its heart, agility is about learning. So what have we learned and what could we improve upon? And if we can improve on agile, what would post-agile really look like? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. And if this is your first time here, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the video, hit like as well. I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsors, Harness, Equal Experts, Octopus and Specflow. They're helping us to grow our channel. And so please do support them in return by checking their links in the description below. One route in the direction of something post agile, or at least second generation agile is continuous delivery. You can learn more about this in my training course, Better Software Faster. Check the links out in the description below. Most of the ideas of agile software development were being practiced in some form or other from the beginning of software development, really. But the term agile when applied to software began with the agile manifesto. The manifesto was written by a bunch of people in a ski resort in 2001. It changed our industry. It has many redeeming features, one of which is that it's really rather short. It's two pages. On the first, it describes four values. It says individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. That is, while there's value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. Then there are 12 principles. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through the early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Deliver working software frequently with a preference for shorter timescales. Business people and developers working closely together on a daily basis. Working software is the primary measure of progress. Agile processes promote sustainable development, so everyone should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. So my first comment on post-agility is this. You can only really be post-agile if you're already doing all of these things. What here is wrong? What here is out of date? What here have we improved upon? It's the Agile Manifesto that defines agility, not Scrum, not SAFE, not even extreme programming. Post-Agile is really a misnomer. This isn't about what comes after Agile thinking. This is what people would like to do instead because Agile thinking is countercultural for them and challenging, changing culture is rather difficult. I believe that the step from what went before to agile thinking was an enormous one and an important one. For me, it represents a step from an over-constrained, limited approach to an unbounded one. I've spoken about this before. Because we embrace change, that means that we can start something even when we don't yet know what we want or have any idea of how to achieve it. That means that we can build bigger, more complex things, unbounded, unlimited things. None of that means that I think that there are no problems. Agile adoption and the industry that grew up around it has largely debased the Agile Manifesto values. Where is individuals and interactions over processes and tools in an industry focused on processes and tools? in most safe or scrum implementations, sadly missing. How many teams are able to deliver working software into the hands of their users continuously, or at least at the end of every sprint? Sadly, nowhere near as many as call themselves agile. These things matter, not for some pseudo religious adoption of practices, but because they help us to build better software faster. If you can't do that, the most agile response of all is to dump the theatre and to try something else until you find something that works better. 
The core idea that resonates most strongly with me comes from Scrum, inspect and adapt. Agile thinking is about learning and adapting to what we learn and to aim to keep getting better, keep refining what we do. Now, I am a nerd and this reminds me of something else that's important to me. To my mind, Agile is very closely aligned with the fundamentals of science. That's why it works, why it's better than any alternative. I think that it's evident that Scrum won the race to be the most popular Agile approach. I think that this is for a very practical but rather disappointing reason. It's the easiest one to cheat. You, if you send people on a Scrum Master courses, start calling two or three weeks at a time a sprint and have meetings without any chairs, you can claim to be practicing Scrum. You aren't, but you can claim it. Most Scrum teams don't embody a customer perspective in any useful way and don't create releasable software every sprint both of which are sensible, important cornerstones of true Scrum. This always reminds me of Einstein's quote on the definition of insanity. Scrum is a very good agile project management approach, but it's certainly easier to cheat than, say, extreme programming. If you aren't doing test-driven development, don't have work in continuous integration, and don't do pair programming, it ain't extreme programming. And those things pretty much guarantee that you'll be producing working software regularly. So while I am skeptical of post-agility, I'm all in favour of finding ways to become post-pseudo-agile ritual. I think that we can build on the idea that the roots of science are also the roots of agility. To my mind, the most agile approach to agile thinking of all is to think about how we can improve upon it. Are there ways to refine or enhance agile thinking to do more or better? That's the kind of post-agility that really interests me. I think that this relationship with the fundamental precepts of science is important. If we could find a way to make more of that, to learn from humanity's best approach to learning and apply it to software, then that will probably work even better. Now, you could probably parse words and say that science is just a process. So what about people over process? When the manifesto was written, our industry was largely enslaved by waterfall thinking. Surprisingly, many parts still are, but these days are less willing to admit it. So my assumption is that the processes that the manifesto's authors had in mind were those high ceremony bureaucratic approaches to development. But science is a process too. Fundamentally though, it's grounded in some very profound ideas and a simple four-step process for learning, the scientific method. Characterization, make a guess based on experience and observation. Hypothesis, propose an explanation. Deduction, make a prediction from the hypothesis. Experiment, test the prediction. Then there are a bunch of other ideas that help us to do those things. We'll build up our learning incrementally, iterating around this process to learn in small steps. We'll be sceptical of people's guesses and prejudices and work to eliminate them, not just other people's guesses and experiences, but our own too. So we'll trust evidence and ideally data over experience. We'll work to control the variables so that when we try to learn something, we can understand what our results really mean. I think that these ideas are fundamental to anything that we could honestly consider to be science. They are more than merely process. If you ignore any of these things, you're simply guessing. Guessing has its place, but if you don't then go on to test your guess, then it's almost certainly wrong. If only because there are many more ways to be wrong than there are to be right. So while mostly I agree with the sentiment that people are more important than process, I also think that bad process will stop good people every time. I think it's naive to reject science as merely yet another form of process. Science allows us to find deeper, more durable truths. As a physicist Richard Feynman said, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself, and you're the easiest person to fool. I think that this is a pretty good description of Agile too. Let's try to avoid fooling ourselves by making progress in small steps, and checking at each step whether or not it was actually progress. 
So if we can accept that science is more than merely process, or give it a special pass, so people over process as long as they're working scientifically, I'm good. If not, that's my first refinement that I would make to define something post-agile. This focus on science offers a lot more useful ideas that we can learn from and adapt. I'm a technical person, so I come at this from a technical perspective rather than a management perspective. That's a pretty good place to start from, though, because after all, we're employed to solve problems through software, so being good at that seems like a good idea. As the manifesto says, working software first. All organisations that produce software for any purpose want this. They want to be able to have an idea, they want to be able to get that idea into the hands of their users, they want to collect feedback so they can figure out whether the idea was good or bad. So let's optimise for that. We'd like to be able to transit this cycle quickly and efficiently. To do that, clearly, we will need to collaborate closely with our customers to learn what they make of our ideas and understand what we should work on next. If we learn something surprising, we can change direction, maybe even discarding the ideas that proved worse than others. No great loss, remember, because we're working in small steps inside this short cycle. We can do more of the good things and less of the bad things, so we're responding to change quite well. If we optimise our organisations, our culture and our technology to speed up this cycle and work so that our software is always releasable, that's what I describe as continuous delivery. Which I should point out just met all of the Agile Manifesto values. The technical embodiment of continuous delivery is a deployment pipeline. It regularises and optimises the build, evaluation and release process. In continuous delivery, we aim to optimise deployment pipelines to give us definitive feedback on the releasability of our changes multiple times per day. What that means is that as well as optimising the path from commit to release, a deployment pipeline is almost an almost perfect experimental platform for any kind of change to our software. If we want to change the configuration of our operating system, Commit the change to the pipeline and deploy your production configuration to a test environment and see how it works. You want to change the code? Commit your change and run tests to see if the change is releasable. I think that each of these tests is an experiment. I've consciously adopted here the mindset and terminology of science because it helps me to do a better job. If this is an experiment, what's my characterization? What's my hypothesis? What's the theory that I want to test? And how will I control the variables in my experiments so that I can understand the results? The characterization is our understanding of the current situation. Here's an example. Currently, when buying books, our users need to search for a book, select a book from a list of matches, and add it to the shopping cart and then go to the checkout. Hypothesis. We could make this more efficient if we could allow them to add any book they saw to the cart. Theory. If we allowed book buyers to take a picture of any book on their phone, we could add it to their shopping cart. Second theory, we could add any book that they think of to the shopping cart. Experiment, take a picture of the book continuous delivery pipelines, confirm it's in the cart. Experiment two, think of the book continuous delivery, confirm it's in the cart. Our experiments don't have to succeed to be useful. My second example is probably a bit tricky until Elon Musk comes along and gets neural link sorted out. But you can learn a lot from even failed experiments. Analyzing the results of our software experiments is easy. We can write a pass-fail test. There's another important lesson that we can learn from science here. However many tests you have, you can never prove that your software is good. But one failing test means that your software isn't good enough. So you can reject your change and either give up on the idea or try to improve your experiment, experiment the test or the code. This is the idea of falsifiability at the heart of modern science. Continuous delivery is certainly an agile discipline. I think it has a claim to be a post-agile discipline too. But it's post-agile in a similar way that Einstein's general relativity is post-Newtonian. Newton's laws of motion are correct, more than accurate enough for most practical purposes. 
but general relativity is a deeper explanation of what is going on, and so can give deeper insights. It also means that when things do get trickier, it still applies. Applying science to solving practical problems has a name. In other disciplines, we call this engineering. I think that applying scientific style reasoning to software to create an engineering discipline for software is the real post-Agile move. And when we do this, we will find that the Agile manifesto is still completely correct. But an engineering approach will significantly improve our chances of achieving those values and principles in practice. Thank you very much for watching.